Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the April 4th Reorganization and Board of Trustees meeting for the Village of Tuckahoe. Would everyone please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And this evening, we have the honor of a few uh, swearing in. People to swear in, uh, may I ask Judge Walter Rivera to please come forward to swear in uh, David Fuller for Village uh, Justice. Thank you, uh, Mayor. It's an honor for me uh, to do this tonight for my good friend and colleague, Judge Fuller. And if you put your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand, please, and repeat after me. I state your name. I, David Fuller. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The uh, office to do the duties of the office of village justice of the village of Tuckahoe Justice Court of the village of Tuckahoe Justice Court according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me God so help me God congratulations <clears throat> thank you judge thank you. The signing of the book. Yes, I do. Thank you. May I ask Kara Cronin to please come forward to be sworn in for village trustee for a term of two years. Who's gonna, you're going to hold the Bible? I'm going to have Zan hold the Bible. Put your right hand up and repeat after me. I, Kara Cronin. I, Kara Cronin. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will uphold the Constitution of the United States. That I will uphold the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of New York. The Constitution of the State of New York. And the laws of the Village of Tuckahoe. And the laws of the Village of Tuckahoe. And I will faithfully discharge my duties of Village Trustee and I will faithfully discharge my duties as village trustee to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. <laughs> and you may take your seat. Thank you, Zan. And we have Nicole Engelbert and her family to be sworn in is village trustee for a term of two years. And who will hold the Bible? Put your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Can you, just because people want to see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, Nicole Engelbert. I, Nicole Engelbert. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. To uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of New York. Constitution of the State of New York. And the laws of the village of Tuckahoe. And the laws of the village of Tuckahoe. And I will faithfully discharge my duties as village trustee. And I will faithfully discharge my duties as village trustee. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations, Trustee Cronin. <laughs> I mean, Engelbert. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Let me take a picture really quick.
So I will we'll take a moment now to <laughs> to get Trustee Engelbert in first. <laughs> you can come around. You can come around. <laughs> You could probably jump over, though. How many trustees does it take? <laughs> <laughs> okay, just for safety. So I'd like, if anyone would like to make some comments, we do have our county executive and our deputy county executive here. If you would like to come forward and offer some congratulatory remarks. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It is certainly an honor and a privilege to be here in the village of Tuckahoe, especially this afternoon, this evening, as you swear in again for um, over the 40th year. We're going to check to make sure you don't hold the <laughs> record here, Judge. Um, and, and certainly uh, re-electing um, Carol Cronin and your new trustee, Nicole Engelbert, is certainly an honor and privilege to be with you all this evening as Tuckahoe continues to move forward. So happy to be here. Thank, Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's an honor to be here, as I have been over the last number of years for these inaugurations year after year, uh, to congratulate uh, the judge, to congratulate uh, the two new trustees, uh, well, re-elected trustee and the new trustee and the work you have ahead. Uh, basically, uh, Ken and I are here to say that you have a partner in county government. There are moments when uh, the village uh, will be able to do whatever it wants to do on its own authority, and there'll be other moments when you turn to look for help from other levels of government, and we're here to do what we can do to help support you in the work that you do for the people of Tuckahoe. So God bless you, good luck, and Godspeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we are certainly happy to have the partnership and support of the county um, administration whenever we need them. Any other comments? from the public. Now's your time to say congratulations. Uh, congratulations, Kara Cronin <laughs> and uh, Nicole. Uh, brings me great pride to be in front of this board today. I've had the pleasure of working on all of your campaigns, mostly as the chair of the Tuckahoe Democrats. For years, a group of volunteers from Tuckahoe that grew larger and larger worked extremely hard to make this happen. Those volunteers are the definition of grassroots organizing. I want to thank them as much as I thank all of you and others for running. You all ran campaigns that you could be proud of. You remained focused on the issues, came up with a viable platform, did community outreach, and uh, excuse me, community outreach, and never stooped to the level others might have went to. That's where I commend you the most. Even though lies were spread about some of you during your campaigns, you all remained level-headed and laser-focused on helping Tuckahoe. To have diversity on our board, represented by a scientist, a professor, retired law enforcement, a vice president in higher education development, and a CEO. We now, in my opinion, have one of the most skillful intelligent, hardworking boards, I believe in the entire country. I look forward to seeing the great work of this board in our community for years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? And I just want to ask everyone to please keep your comments very brief. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here because I just love this thing. You know, they make me happy, and I know they're going to continue to do a terrific job in Tuckahoe. So may God continue to bless you all. I love you all. And you can call on Marvin anytime for help. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. OK, anyone else? Good evening. Good evening. And I am the happiest person in this room right now, probably the oldest also. So I um, just want to congratulate you on the dignity and veracity with which you conducted your campaign and wish you 
the best as you govern this beautiful little city, a village. I am so proud at this moment. And my family's been here since 1936, and I don't ever remember seeing this combination of uh, this representation of women and and women. I can't, <laughs> I can't help it. I just can't. But, but, Sorry, but good, good luck and Godspeed. Thank God you. Respect. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Tony Fiore. Anthony Fiore, but in place. So I want to say congratulations to Trustee Cronin, Trustee Engelbert. Best of luck to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. What an exciting day to be in Tuckahoe um, and to see these two incredible candidates for the village trustees sworn in for two year terms. Thank you, Karen Nicole, for stepping up to serve all of us. I admire all of you and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for Tuckahoe because I do expect more. Mm, thank you. Okay, uh, so I will ask the board members. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris DiGiorgio. Chris DiGiorgio, 50 Columbus. And uh, I want to also congratulate Judge Filler. Um, mm -hmm. Long, distinguished career here. Uh, and congratulations to Kara and Nicole. Um, one observation I want to make, and I, I'll have more comment uh, at the next meeting, but I, I am thrilled that the two people that stood up and were, were amenable to having a debate won this election. Uh, I'm saddened that um, the other candidates did not debate. Um, I think it's important that we um, really talk about our vision in Tuckahoe. And um, I hope in the future that uh, we will have debates and we will be able to really talk about the issues from both sides of the aisle. Um, again, I'm glad for Nicole and Kara to step up. I also want to say um, what some of the things that were said during the campaign, again, I'll talk about it another time, but I just think to, to mischaracterize the record was, was disappointing, to say the least. Um, but having said all that, you all did a marvelous job of getting to the people, talking to the people, and getting elected, and congratulations. Thank you. On a lighter note, as a proud mama, I would like to say congratulations to my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yep. what, what would we do without proud mamas? <laughs> okay, so I think on that note, I'd like to ask the board for comments, and I'll start with Deputy Mayor. So I just want to congratulate, um, you know, Kara for... Um, uh, being recognized for everything she has done the past year. She sat in office and uh, for everything that I know she's going to be able to add over the next two years. And to Nicole Engelbert for stepping up. Um, you know, it's a very difficult thing to do to put your hat in the ring, um, especially um, the first time. And I'm also excited about everything that Nicole brings to the mm -hmm. board. I want to remind folks that it's really important, you know, one of the things that we've been working on for a number of years now has been inclusion um, in local government. It's very important to us and uh, we sit here as representatives for everyone in the village and we really want to welcome and make sure that everyone participates in local government. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Taylor. I would like to con congratulate Nicole Engelbert and Kara Cronin for becoming village, tr village trustees. Um, Kara was already a trustee for one year, and I think she did an excellent job in proving 
um, not only her ability, but her desire to work hard and do whatever it takes to bless the village of Tuckahoe and the residents. Congratulations to Judge Fuller. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, and I, I'd just like to say a few words before I ask Kara and, um, or Trustee Cronin and Trustee Engelbert to speak. Um, once we, we campaign, and once the campaign is over, it's time to govern. And this board is not a board for the Democrats or a board for the Republicans or a board for the independents. It's a board for all of Tuckahoe. And so it's important for those who are sitting in the audience that are here in support of the candidates, as well as for the candidates who have now won um, the trust of the village to remember that we are serving everyone. And that's important. And this is an opportunity to, to continue to work on unifying the village, bringing people together, and really speaking to the issues that are important to the residents. So I just want to bring that to the forefront because that's the most important thing. And we can get very divisive during campaigns. Everyone wants their team to win. I get it. I watch football. I watch basketball. I know how it works. But once you are elected, now you're an elected official for all of Tuckahoe. And so I just want to remind everyone of that. And I want to congratulate both candidates who have won, uh, Kara, whom I've worked with for a year. And as I've said to many people, she has far exceeded my expectations of village trustee from um, responding to COVID during the last year and a half, more than a year. Um, to helping residents who were impacted by Hurricane Ida, and even helping a, a group of tenants form their own tenants association and writing, like single-handedly writing their bylaws. So these are people who are hands-on, who are competent, and who are passionate, and I think both of those characteristics are really important in this role. So congratulations, ladies. I am very proud to serve with you. So. Trustee Cronin. Hello, everybody. Um, it's nice to be here. Thank you all for coming. It's nice to see everybody in the room. Um, I trust that you're all well. I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to everybody here, everybody that's watching on television. Um, most importantly, just to say thank you to the village uh, and the residents of this village for their vote of confidence and faith in me um, and that you've entrusted me with another term. I am extraordinarily grateful and very humbled by that. Again, I hope to live up to your expectations and the expectations set forth by this esteemed position. And I remind residents that I am accessible to hear your questions, your concerns, or your ideas. Just about everybody in the village has my phone number and you can find me on, on social media. And I encourage you to reach out and, and make contact and, and tell me what you're thinking. Tell us all what you're thinking about what happens here in the village. Um, you know, I take this role very seriously and I, I see this as a role where I am accountable to all of you. So um, I know that you put me here and I wanna live up to that. Um, as always, I wanna thank the mayor and the, the rest of the board for their vote of confidence in, in me and, and Nicole. Um, I think I speak for both of us and we say thank you to all of the hard work that you've done over the last year. And um, I, I'm excited to keep doing this work with all of you. I want to thank Gina Lee and Danny Lang for putting themselves out there to serve this village. Running for these positions is not easy, and anyone who does it deserves a nod for their efforts. I also want to congratulate Judge Fuller um, for your years of service and excellence um, serving this village. We are very much appreciative of it. Um, and I want to reach out to all of you. This role is is a lot about service, but service goes both ways, and so we are asking that all of you find something that you love in this village to step up and do, some way to give back, some way to help out. Um, there are committees and there are boards and there are just gatherings where we ask people to help and donate their time. Um, and so if you can, you know, please at any time reach out and ask how you can get involved. Whatever your interest is, whatever your passions are, there is something that will speak to you and that you will find joy and love and, and help. And it'll be great for all of us to work together. That's how we move forward through the divisiveness. That's how we get along and we keep moving forward together as a community. We owe it again to our children to work together. Um, and I want to just say thank you to my children and my husband for all of your love and support and my very proud mama. <laughs> and 
I have about six adopted proud mamas in the audience, mm -hmm. and I want to say thank you to every one of you. Doing this job, you make a lot of friends who become family, and so I want to say thank you to every single person who showed up here tonight. Have a, and thank you to Nicole for running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Trustee Engelbert. Can we ask everyone to please silence your phones? So there's a, too many people to, to, to thank um, for something. I mean, it takes a, it takes a village to serve, serve a village, to, to be sure. And as I look out even on the audience today, I wish I could look out on all the folks who are out on, on Zoom as well to see so many friends, new friends, um, over, the, over the past year is an, an unexpected and wonderful part of of the campaign. Um, I'd also like to thank my, my son Nicholas and husband Matt who are in the in the audience who we folded a lot of letters and stacked a lot of palm cards and you cooked a lot of dinners kind of without out me throughout the campaign. But it does take kind of a village including your family to do to do all of this and certainly the committee that organized this campaign Julie Gurdon, you are all that and a bag of chips, the good kind. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to particularly thank my, my running mate and now kind of fellow trustee, Kara um, Cronin, Dr. Cronin. She taught me a lot over the last, uh, last three months about what service is um, and what it means to kind of serve people and to serve a village. One day, one of the many afternoons that we crisscrossed this village, she said, I just love people. And it, it, it comes through in so many ways, and she sets a standard for kind of what it means to serve and to serve others and to serve a community. And I, I pledge in the next two years to try to live up to that standard. It's a very high bar but I will do my absolute best to discharge my duties kind of at the level of performance that um, Dr. Cronin has shown me in, in the last three months. So Kara, thank you for calling me on that, on that afternoon in December, but also thank you more for kind of showing me what service truly, truly is. So thank you. Thank you all. So having said that, now it's time to govern. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Trustee Engelbert. Present. Deputy Mayor Hines. Present. 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 And we do have some appointments today. So yeah, I'm going to, and then we'll. <laughs> so I just. Um, the first appointment will be for a deputy mayor for a period of one year to Dr. Renee Howell. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So moved. So the, the second appointment uh, we will, will be for Associate Village Justice Michael O'Toole for a period of one year. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And can I ask uh, Judge Fuller to please come up and swear Michael O'Toole as judge? And you have a Bible. Okay. And then we will do our congratulations. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute the office. That I will faithfully execute the office. Associate Village Justice of the Village Court of Tuckahoe. Of the Associate Village Justice of the Village Court of Tuckahoe. And will, to the best of my ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. So help me God. So help me God. Judge O'Toole, if you have a few words. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to thank the Mayor and the Board for uh, showing confidence in me. 
uh, to continue as Associate Village Justice uh, for the Village of Takaho. This is my 32nd one-year appointment. <laughs> I can't get a long-term contract, <laughs> as well, I can see. Maybe you got to keep you got to keep proving yourself you around here. Go free agent. <laughs> free agent. Around here, so I can get a long-term contract. That's funny. Uh, and I've been appointed by Democratic mayors and boards and Republican mayors and boards ever since uh, my first appointment by Mayor White back in 1991. Uh, and through that whole time, uh, my wife has sat through all these appointments. She's out in the audience tonight. Um, so she's here for her 30-second appointment. <laughs> um, and I hope to continue to gain your confidence as we move forward through the next year. Congratulations. And congratulations, Judge Fuller, and thank you. Okay, we have um, a number of appointments, so we will do them in sort of groups. So we have um, one-year appointments for our village administrator, David Burke, receiver of taxes, Camille DeSalvo, Jackie Ferretti, our deputy clerk, who's somewhere in the back. Hi, Jackie. Todd Huttonman, our assessor, Gary Gertson, our village attorney, Nick Zanzano, our village historian, and Linda Laird, the Registrar of Vital Statistics. May I have a motion for all that I have just called? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Any? So moved. Uh, the Planning Board. So may I have a motion for a two one-year terms for Planning Board Chairman Antonio Leo and Planning Board Ad Hoc Member Adrian Michel. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? May I have a motion for a five-year term for Planning Board Member Paul Wolfson? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And for a zoning board, we have two one-year term members, uh, zoning board chairman Tom Ringwald and zoning board ad hoc member Lorette, L Lauren Peretta may have a motion for both. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And may I have a motion for a five-year term for zoning board member Nathan Jackman? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And we'd also like a motion for Heather Rinaldi for zoning board member uh, to fill the unexpired term of David Scalzo ending 4-1-2023. So moved. Second. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And so we move on to the TESC, the Tuckahoe Environmental and Sustainability Committee. May I please have a motion for three-year terms for all the members I will be uh, stating, Donald Crosby, Harmeet Goindy, Erin Provenzano, and Barbara Niemannen. So <laughs> moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, may I have a motion for a one-year term for Laura Raffiani to serve on sign and awning chairwoman? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And this will make Ginger Crosby very happy. May I have a motion to fill the library board position with Julie Gurdon for a term of five years? So moved. Second. Oh, <laughs> that was an emphatic. <laughs> May I have um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Any opposed? Okay. Uh, may I also have a motion for Julie Hahn to fill the unexpired term of Zakina Smith um, on the assessment review board ending September 30th, 2026? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so there you have all of our new appointees. Let's congratulate them also. <clears throat> I want to take a moment and ask the board if you'd like to say any words. I want to thank our village employees, first and foremost, 
um, for the work that you do throughout the year, our village administrator and our our um, attorney and our clerk, Camille and Jackie. Um, we, we really can't run the village and we have very limited resources and without them, I don't know what we would do. So thank you all so much for your work throughout the year. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed even if we don't say thank you enough. So we'll take this public moment to say thank you very much. Also want to thank all of the volunteers who serve on the planning and zoning and environmental committees and sign and awning. These are people who, are, who give their time and their talents and their passion to, to the village, to I think Trustee Cronin's point earlier, they found something that they could give back and they do so year after year. And so I want to um, let the committee members who are volunteering know that we appreciate your time, that I don't take it for granted, and that um, we, we see you, we see you. And if there's anybody on the board that would like to say a few words to any of the appointments, you may do so now. I would just like to um, agree with our mayor. You see how long that list is. That's really what it takes to run this village. And we couldn't do it without our judges. We couldn't do it without our village employees. And we couldn't do it without all of the amazing volunteers we have to fulfill all these committees. So just thank you again. Yeah. OK. So we have no presentations today. So we will move to our public hearings. Um, and we have. Two public hearings. The first one is already open uh, to consider a proposed local law to allow for apiaries or beehives within the village of Tuckahoe. We've um, had some discussions about this. And if there's anyone that would like to weigh in, now is the time to do so. Nobody? OK. Yes. I meet Gwendy, 135 Oakland. Uh, bees are good. We should have them. Let's just go ahead and pass the law okay <laughs> <laughs> and if, the, if there's anyone that would like to take a moment now to um to leave if you've been appointed and you're you're ready to go home you may do so now <laughs> and we won't be offended <laughs> okay yeah thank you all Thank you, Judge. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. So for everyone who is watching on from home, we have combined our reorganization meeting and our regular meeting. So it might seem like we are doing things that you would not normally see at a reorg meeting. Good night. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there, there was someone who wanted to speak on the bees. Okay. Can we just have some order and um, let's get back to business. To business. <laughs> Deputy, Deputy Mayor, she's got them. She's got all the jokes. Hello. Yes. Hello. I read that uh, you, we got the, the uh, way to have bees, and is it possible, and how will neighbors react? Is a public thing? If I all of a sudden have a beehive in my garden, will they call the police or what? <laughs> so we, we do have, um, uh, we have a legislation that's been written that gives guidance to how this, can, how this works. So um, we can, you can access that on our website if you have access, or if you email any one of us, we can always get it to you if you'd like. But basically, we are we can now have bees in our house in our gardens. Yeah. Well, we're that's what we're talking about right now. So the public hearing, people are weighing in, and then the board will vote on it shortly. I thought it was already all approved. Not yet. We're we're doing the public hearing. The board will vote on it tonight. However. Okay, thank you. We'll make sure that's in the record. I'll get a free honey when, when I have my bees. <laughs> okay, so we all get free honey? Everybody heard that. It's on record. <laughs> uh, can I address the board? 
Donald yes, who who is who's addressing the board? Donald Crossing. Okay. What did she say? Oh. Okay, great. Okay. David, Thank first, you. can you address that? Yeah, <laughs> so when, once it's passed tonight, we'll get the final version up on the website. Thank okay. You. And if you're not able to locate it, just let one of us know and we will get it to you. Great. Okay? Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to weigh in on the local law allowing for beehives in the village? Yes. Hi, I'm Samantha, 72 Main Street. What's your last name? Uh, first name. <laughs> and um, I have been actually, I'm a myrmecologist. I take care of ants, and I've been doing that since I was 16 years old. And ants are pretty much the cousins of bees, which I have studied pretty much my whole life. Mm. And um, the bees that are coming here, they're going to be honeybees. They're not going to be the wasps or the hornets or ones that could actually sting and harm. And the honeybees, they pretty much keep to themselves. They make honey for us. They um, take care of the earth way better than us humans can. <laughs> um, they make our flowers, our trees, and everything blossom so well. So I think it's a very good idea to incorporate our insect family into our community and have them take care of us as well. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else would like to weigh in? Okay, anyone else on Zoom? David? All right, so I will ask for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And so I think I will move to, um, to vote on this resolution. So if you go to number five, I'll ask for a motion authorizing a proposed local law to allow apiaries or beehives within the village of Tuckahoe. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And the ayes have it. Congratulations, Tuckahoe. <laughs> and the Environmental Committee, who has worked very hard to um, craft this ordinance with the help of our village administrator. So uh, the second public hearing that we have is a uh, public hearing to consider the tentative budget for fiscal year June 1st, 2022 through May 31st, 2023. Um, I believe we have to open the hearing. So may I have a motion to open the hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so the public hearing is open to consider the tentative budget. If there's anyone that would like to weigh in on this budget, um, please do so now. Chris DiGiorgio, 50 Columbus. Um, generally, it would be uh, good if you can give us an overall view of what you think your vision is for this budget. Mm -hmm. But I would, I also want to say we've made some really good progress with regard to the roads in Tuckahoe this last year and I I would like to see us continue that progress um, I just want to say something about the village of Pelham if I may sure. <laughs> I drive down Kings Highway uh, which is now Nourishell I forgot what that road is that the continuation of Kings Highway but in Pelham that road is a disaster. And, and, I, and I say to myself, we're sister villages, and what I see with what we've been doing with our roads and seeing other areas not maintaining roads, um, it's, it's something I think we should be looking at as a, as a general plan for our village to make sure the roads are well maintained. 
I think we've made some good progress, and I'd like to see that as part of our budget. Thank you. Yes, and we will have our village administrator give an overview of the budget. We still do have some work sessions. Uh, we're continuing to meet with department heads to talk about um, their asks for their department, so we, there's more to come. If there's anyone else that has any, any thoughts, questions, or would like to weigh in on the tentative budget. Yep. Hello. Again. I know fuel is going to be a little problem here. I'm going to keep on going up and up. So let's do the best you can and try to keep it under the cap. Mm -hmm. yeah. and everything's all going up fuel, electricity, insurance, everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things that we're, we're grappling with. And to, to um, Chris DiGiorgio's point, you know, we, um, we took advantage of the opportunity to get bond at a very, very low, pretty much free, <laughs> so that we could take care of some of our infrastructure. So it was something that you know was available to us, and we jumped on it because we knew that our roads and other items, you know, our our traffic lights and some other infrastructure issues needed to be addressed moving forward. So I'll let David give a little update. Um, so just a real quick update on the tentative budget. Um, tentative budget was filed. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, yeah, but wait, I do have a PowerPoint if you want to try to put that up. Okay, so moving forward. Um, the tentative budget, budget was filed on March 21st. Um, it is normally due the 20th, but the 20th was a Sunday. So filed on the 21st. The total budget this year is $14.133 million. Um, that does represent an increase of a proposed tax levy increase of 1.79%. So the Village of Tucko specific tax cap is actually 0.34%. So this tentative budget does was filed over the tax cap. Um, if the board so chooses to want to break that tax cap, they should set a public hearing, but we've already heard from the board we're keeping it under it. So um, we'll figure out and I'll, I'll um, let you know a few ways of how best to do that, or I think would be the best way to do that kind of moving forward. Um, so what does that mean? Again, this proposed budget, what does it mean for a home assessed at $500,000? It's about $123 year over year increase. Um, so I was hoping that <laughs> you guys could see this. Um, so what I wanted to do is I, I did have a slide about last year and how we talked about the American Rescue Plan funding where we didn't know exactly what we were doing with that. We didn't know how much we were getting for that. Um, and we used all of that funding or that proposed funding to shore up the village finances. I mean, without that, um, there would have been over a 7% tax levy increase last year. It came in at just a little over 3%. So one of the, the worry, um, worry things I worry about is long-term, these are one shots. I mean. We are going to get, we got revenue last year and we got revenue this year and then moving forward, we're not gonna have that anymore. So something that's in this proposed budget is to use most of that funding for two CDBG capital projects that we did receive, but that would that would be the matching portion of it because we have to wean ourselves off of this funding because it's, it's one shot funding and we're not gonna get it. Um, so. That's, so total for the American Rescue Plan funding was $670,000 broken up over two years, 335 in this budget and, and 335,000 dollars in next budget. Um, so without the capital expenditures in regards to the American Rescue Plan funding, the total budget expenditure increase in this budget is less than $100,000 dollars. Take away the capital expenditures, it's less than $100,000. That's 0.71%. So we're really kind of holding the line in regards to expenditures. Um, one of the things I kind of wanted to hammer home is parking. Parking, parking, parking. So we've <laughs> heard a lot about this funding, $670,000, how it's 
you know, what are we doing with this funding? What are we, what are, you know, the village is com coming into a lot of money. You guys should be doing this kind of thing. Just to give everyone a sense, and this is just one revenue line or the parking revenue line. It's got a few revenue lines. Over $1 million lost in the last three years. That's a lot of money. So when it comes to the American Rescue Plan funding of $670,000, we're already dealing with a parking revenue loss of over a million dollars. So it's not something that the village has all this free money. It's you know, we're, we're really trying to just stabilize our revenue losses moving forward. Um, again, so I just kind of wanted to hammer that home. We do still have revenue challenges in regards to parking revenues down, court administration fees are down. And then we know, as Mr. Fiore mentioned, energy costs are skyrocketing. Everything is skyrocketing. Um, so those are some of the, the, the challenges that we're going to have to deal with. Just to let everyone know, there is no proposed fund balance use in this budget. Um, I just philosophically believe that as the budget officer, I'm not going to provide you with a budget that has that. It's up to you guys of what you guys want to do with that. But the fund balance remains strong as of last year. It is over $2.3 million, which represents over 16% of the total budget. So it's a really strong fund balance. And again, the reason why we were got such low interest rates, one is interest rates were low, but you know, I like to brag about this, that we did beat Bronxville on uh, when we went out to bonding and we got a lower interest rate than them because we have such a good fund balance. So, so tonight is the public hearing. The public hearing needs to be closed by April 20th. So if the board so chooses not to close the public hearing tonight, they should schedule another meeting to do so. Um, if they do close it, we will move on to budget work sessions. One more schedule for next Monday. Um, at uh, 7 p.m. here at Village Hall, and then a special adoption meeting uh, Monday the 25th. And I just want to say, this is not done by just me. This budget was a lot of hard work and the department heads, Village Treasurer Ryan Wade, a lot of input from the board. So just a big thank you to everyone. So if you guys have any questions or specific questions over what's in the budget, please let me know. If anyone has any questions or comments on the board, Okay, and I also do want to encourage the community to come out to the work sessions. You know, that way you can hear uh, more of the details of the budget, and you can always email any one of us, including the village administrator um, and anyone on the board, if there are questions that you have or if you have um, you want to weigh in. There's still that opportunity. Okay, unless there's any there are any other thoughts, questions, or comments from the board or from the public. Going once, going twice. Um, I will ask for a motion to close the public hearing to consider the budget for fiscal year Jan June 1st, 2022 through May 31st, 2023. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, and again, our next uh, work session to review the budget is April 11th, is it? April 11th at 7 p.m. here in Village Hall. Okay, so we'll move on to the adoption of the minutes. Uh, so may I have a motion for the approval of minutes of the March 7, 2022 meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, and so you have the public's first opportunity to address the board on any agenda items. If there's anyone that has any comments on any of the agenda items? Now is your opportunity. Yes? Samantha Christian again, 72 Main Street. Can you speak into the mic, Samantha? Uh, Samantha Christian, 72 Main Street. Yeah. And um, I would absolutely love it if you could actually get Webster Bank to come here. Um, I'm not a fan of Chase. I, yeah, I have their account, but I'm not a fan of them or Wells Fargo. But it's so I love Webster Bank. They're the best bank I've ever one of the best banks I've ever had in my lifetime, other than the Bank of New York. <laughs> um, and so it would be very convenient and very helpful if there was a Webster Bank somewhere in Tuckahoe that okay. was accessible. Okay, and just I think what you're referring to is the third resolution, adopt, adopting the use of those banks, Webster. So I'll explain that when we get there. Thank you. Anyone else want to address the board on any agenda items? Okay, so we'll move on to some resolutions. So the first resolution, I um, may have a motion authorizing the readoption of the P 
procurement policy on file with the village clerk. So so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, may I have a motion adopting the mileage reimbursement rates adopted by the IRS at five eighty five per mile? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And uh, Samantha, to your question, adopting the re designation of the following banks for the village of Tuckahoe, these are the banks that we would do business with. Not necessarily would they be um, have a branch here in the village. So that would be up to the, the owner of that location. I think I've spoken to you about that spot. We don't bring the banks in. The, the landlord for that building may rent that space out to a bank or not, but this is just for the village to do business with these three banks. Um, so may I have a motion adopt, adopting the designation of Webster Bank, Chase, and Wells Fargo? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, number four, may I have a, a res, a, I'm sorry, a motion adopting the East Chester Review as the official paper of the village? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And number six, we, we did the resolution already for the local law. I'm gonna ask David if you would speak a little bit about the um, ex the agreement with um, Sustainable Westchester. So as many residents already know, we are within a program, it's called Community Choice Aggregation, where the board did vote on it a year ago, maybe a little more. <laughs> over a year ago. Before, yeah. Um, that kind of l lets this organization go out and do aggregate pricing for for natural gas and electricity this is actually an extension of that and uh, we actually got into the five-year cycle a little bit late um, so the it goes until june 30th of this year they're actually looking to do just a six-month extension right now with okay. with energy prices fluctuating so much right now they don't want to go out you know and obviously they have much smarter people than i am to go <laughs> we should do a six month and then go out for the five year after that so this is just basically an extension of that but there will be new rates come july 1st so when the extension comes up until november 30th so again everybody will see that the letters will go out you can opt out of it you can opt out of the program at any time you can always shop for your own esco you are not i mean the village did vote to put us into this program or put residents into this program, but anyone can get out of it at any point. So I know I've got a couple of questions going. I want to shop for my own ESCO. You can absolutely do that. Okay. So may I have a motion to um, extend the electric service in coordination with Sustainable Westchester? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? And then number seven, um, we have been in talks about um, outdoor dining and um, resuming outdoor dining this year. And so the board has talked about the possibility of um, allowing the businesses to resume outdoor dining, um, but also by paying some of the uh, meter tax, um, meter revenue. As you heard David talk about our million dollar loss, so um, we think that people are interested in outdoor dining. They want to keep it. I've gotten a lot of emails about it. So I'd like to ask for a motion to authorize the village to take steps to relax the zoning provisions, to assist local restaurants, um, to continue outdoor dining with a maximum of three parking spaces per establishment at the cost of $6 per spot per day from Monday through Saturday um, and other provisions provided by the village administrator beginning May 1st. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? So we're outdoor dining it is. <laughs> um, may I have a motion authorizing the surplus of a Ford Focus to be sold to the highest bidder? So moved. And? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And David, remind me of which vehicle this is. Okay. And um, we also have a, um, I need a motion authorizing the surplus of a Ford Explorer, utility police, SUV, 
also to be sold to the highest bidder. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And any abstentions? And we do have a few tax certs. Um, nothing like I remember when I first got here. So um, thank God for that. Uh, so may I have a motion authorizing a tax cert settlement with Gion Street Orange World LLC for assessment years 2018 to 2019 at the street address of 65 Maynard Street in the amount of $2,673.36. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And also a motion authorizing a tax cert settlement with uh, GVK Realty Corp for assessment years 2020 to 2021 at 90 Lake Avenue in the amount of $3,151. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, and then number 12, this is a very special day for Nicole Engelbert, um, proclaiming April 29th as um, Arbor Day in the village of Tuckahoe and also Nicole Engelbert's birthday, so it'll be her day. May I have a motion? No moved. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? This, this is the real reason she wanted to get on the board, just so everyone knows. And the last resolution, um, we have to pay the bills, authorizing the approval of vouchers in the amount of $411,026.52. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, we got through the resolutions. So you can have the reorg meeting combined with the regular meeting. <laughs> David likes that. Doesn't have to be here next week. Um, so, departmental reports. So, the chief I know is here somewhere. <laughs> For a different reason. But no Saturday. <laughs> Hi, chief. Good evening. Uh, congratulations on Trustee Cronin's reelection, and congratulations to Trustee Engelbert on her election, and welcome. Of course, congratulations to Judge Fuller and Judge O'Toole uh, for their long service to the village. Um, and I'd also like to say thank you to Trustee Lang for his service as a trustee as well. Uh, just one quick announcement. Um, the alternate side of the street parking signs are up. Um, we started issuing um, warning tickets and we will continue to issue warnings the remainder of this week. And full enforcement starts next Monday. So please pay attention to the signs. The signs are up for a street cleaning in the nice weather. So that's mm -hmm. my report. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. We have Superintendent of DPW. He's walking around. It's easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Frank DeMarco. I'm with the Department of Public Works, just in case you forgot an appointment tonight. <laughs> 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 but anyway, um, I also want to congratulate Nicole and Kara to the both of you. Congratulations and welcome back. Um, again, if DPW could help you in any other way, we're here. I also want to uh, say a shout out to Danny Lang, uh, all his assistants with DPW over the years, and wish him well. Uh, at the last meeting, I, I missed the last meeting, and uh, there were reasons why, but uh, um, Anthony Laurie came up and he mentioned two individuals, John Saviano and Robert Federico. They were leaving DPW and uh, found an assignment with the uh, East Chester uh, Fire Department. Uh, I didn't want to say anything at the time because they were still employed with DPW in Tuckahoe and I wanted to wish them well. I wanted to make sure everything went well with their assignment. And uh, we're losing two great individuals, uh, talented and skilled, and uh, they worked hard for the Department of Public Works in Tuckahoe. So I want to wish them well and congratulate them on their new assignment with the the East Chester Fire Department. I'm going to move on to EV charging stations. People keep on asking me, what does EV mean? Uh, EV means electrical vehicle charging stations. And uh, the village of Tuckahoe is, is proud to announce that we have 48 charging spots that are going to be assigned throughout the village. 
that's 48 charging spots. It's actually 24 stations. Each, each station has two charging units, so that's 48 in total. Uh, we've started uh, progressing an in insulation of them. Uh, we have it here at the uh, Village Hall. We also have it at the Department of Public Works. We started across the street here in the Main Street parking lot, and people probably see um, them installing the units at the Fisher Avenue parking lot as well. Um, we're going to have some on Columbus Avenue. We're going to have some on Marbledale Road. We're going to have it at the Lake Street parking lot. We're going to also have it at the Oak Street parking lot. Uh, and I think every corner you turn, you'll run into an EV charging station, which we're all pretty proud of, at no cost to the village. Uh, through NYSERDA's grant and working in conjunction with Con Edison doing the electrical installation and engineers that are working together uh, with Teleelectric that are actually doing the installation of all the charging stations. So we should be complete with that, I'm hoping, within the next couple of months. Now I've, I've touched on the topic of EV charging stations. Uh, what DPW is also getting involved in is transitioning over to battery operated power tools and equipment. Uh, us in conjunction with some of the other Westchester municipalities, DPW departments, are working together to try to purchase the, act, the most industrial strength power tools that we could possibly find on the market. And we have procured some of them, so we're going to try them out and see how they work. And hopefully, uh, they'll stand up to their quality. And we'll let everybody know how that works out. Mosquito control. Um, going back a couple of years, hmm? Westchester County used to do mos mosquito controls. Uh, so what they used to do is drop the lava sides ins inside of our catch basins annually, and you'll see a dot of whatever color they're using for that year, whether it be orange, blue, white, and that signifies that a pellet has been dropped in that catch basin to protect us from mosquitoes. But they have ceased that over the past couple of years, so this board has elected that I take that on last year, and we have. We filed with the DEC. Uh, we've, we've gathered all our permits that was needed, uh, and we ended up dropping all the lava sites in each one of our catch basins last year. We're also going to be doing that again this year. Uh, we're going to be starting that probably within a four-week period after we get our permits from the DEC. And um, you'll sell, let you know what the color dot's going to be for, for this time around. <laughs> but um, we also, people don't know is that, you know, we also drop minnows uh, in our quarries, in our lakes and it controls the mosquito population as well. Mm. So we've been doing that for possibly, probably the last two, three years. And we're gonna be doing that again this year. The minnows are supplied to us by Westchester County. Hanging baskets. Uh, you know, this is the type of season where, you know, DPW is gonna get into hanging baskets, doing the landscaping, gathering all the flowers and designs. Um, so I ask that everybody please support the beautification committee. Um, it's a big challenge for them every year to, to gather the funding for these hanging baskets. And they have procured them every year, uh, depending on funding and donations and you know whatever people could do to help them out. I appreciate it. I don't want those baskets to start diminishing because they're, they're a big part of our spring season in Tuckahoe. I also want to congratulate Aaron Provenzano, Donald Crosby, the entire Tuckahoe Environmental Committee for all they do, they're doing and especially with this uh, beehive legislation. It, it all worked well. Thank you. Anybody have Thank a you. Thank you. Nope. Right. Thank you for the uh, mosquito okay. report. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Bees, ants, mosquitoes. Ma Mayor, can I make a comment? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd want to really congratulate the, the DPW on the, the EV charging stations. I mean, not only are they wonderful for, for the environment, I certainly enjoy driving my own electric vehicle, um, but they're also great for the economic development of our community as folks kind of plug in their cars. They're typically going out and getting a sandwich, <laughs> you know, getting a haircut, getting some cupcakes. Their nails done. Their nails done, <laughs> all sorts of things. So these, I believe, are a draw for folks to do, to do business and to shop local. In, in Tuckahoe, so I think it's a wonderful investment in the economic health of it our village. More welcoming. 
to all. And plus, you know, DPW as well, now that we have our charging stations, we can look forward to possibly purchasing some electrical charging yeah. vehicles, mm -hmm. some electrical vehicles. Great. Thank you, Frank. Camille, do you have anything? <coughs> Okay, <laughs> got to sign the book. <laughs> uh, David? I don't have anything in particular. I just want to wish former uh, Trustee Lang the best. Um, looking to work with um, Trustee Cronin again this year. I am a little worried considering we're probably going to be shutting down streets all the time. <laughs> I will try to push back as much as possible, but <laughs> it's happening. And then congratulations to Trustee Engelbert. I understand, you know, where she comes. It's nice to have a fellow upstater close by is now. Mm -hmm. So um, congratulations and look forward to working. You share the same alma mater, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Greg, uh, Gary? I just want to thank the board again for the reappointment. Um, and congratulations, Trustee Cronin and Trustee Engelbert. Look forward to working with you this year. Look forward to working with the whole board. Thank you. There's a lot to do. Yes, there is a lot to do. Um, and so we have um, some miscellaneous business, which is not really miscellaneous. But we have our budget work session we talked about on April 11th at 7 p.m. So that will replace our village board meeting. Um, so if you're interested in joining us, the board work session will be here at Village Hall. Um, we will not have... Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Yes, just to have the right that works. I just have a brief report from the Tucker Library on behalf of Swadish Bajdanda. A lot of congratulations to Karen, Nicole, Judge Fuller, and all the appointees. And we'd like to th thanks to County Legislator David Marr and the Board of Legislators for funding the amount of $10,805 to the Tuckahoe Library for programs and services. Also, New York Presbyterian Lawrence Hospital is donating $1,000 to the library in support of community programs. And this week is National Library Week. It's Connect with Your Library. We have a few special programs on Wednesday, April 6th at 6.30, we have author Desmond Paul on Zoom for a discussion about his must-read debut novel, Your Corner Door. And Irish Step Dancing with the Golding Academy on Zoom, Saturday, April 9th at 4 p.m., all ages. And we have begun one-on-one -on -one tech help. We'll be, we'll be beginning on uh, uh, the 11th of April. Mondays 4.30 to 5.30 every 15 minutes, and Wednesdays 1.30 to 2.30 every 30 minutes. So come and connect with your library. Check the calendar to register to see all of our wonderful events. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we will not have any budget work sessions that we previously reported would be on Saturdays. Those will not be happening. Um, we also have the Easter egg hunt at Parkway Oval on April 16th at 11 a.m., so bring out the kids. We do have our special village board meeting to adopt the budget on April 25th at 7 p.m. And our next actual village board meeting will be on May 9th um, at 7 p.m. And then it takes us to the board of trustee reports and uh, trustee Engelbert. We don't, you know, we don't let you slack off around here. You have a report? <laughs> I do have a, have a report that was very graciously provided <laughs> to me by the Tuckahoe history committee so thank you to that committee for all their <laughs> hard work putting together this this report um, but the committee would like to congratulate nicholas zanzano on his appointment as the village historian well done uh, mr zanzano was born and raised in tuckahoe for the past seven years nick has used his technological expertise which i like and volunteered <laughs> countless hours to promote present and preserve the historical record of tuckahoe he will continue t the tremendous legacy of Phil and Alice White and others who have guarded the past history for the future. Um, they also would like to thank Alice White and Mayor Phil White for their selfless devotion to preserving Tuckahoe history over 20 years, and we are committed uh, to continue these efforts. Uh, Mr. Zanzano gave a part, gave, has given part one of a three-part slideshow presentation, Past and Present Tuckahoe, to the Tuckahoe Seniors on Thursday, March 31st. And on Wednesday, March 16th at 1 p.m., the veterans had a wreath-laying ceremony at the Crawford Monument to commemorate the 245th anniversary of the death of Revolutionary War hero 
Samuel Crawford, a link to the YouTube um, video of this is posted on the Tuckahoe History and Ward House Facebook pages. I had the pleasure of actually attending it, and it was fantastic. Um, on March, uh, March Facebook, okay, during March, on the Facebook page, seven posts garnered over 7,200 views, mm -hmm. which is outstanding, with the most read posts on the 30th anniversary of the Marble Hall fire and Rich Forleano's post on Tuckahoe Irish history. Now, the Tuckahoe Committee, History Committee, meets on Wednesdays from 9.30 to 12 here in Village Hall, and contact information for that committee is available on the Village website. That's it for me. Thank you, Trustee Engelbert. Deputy Mayor Howe. Thank you. Um, so congratulations again to our uh, newly elected trustees, and also wanted to thank Gina Lee and Danny Lang for running. Um, it's really important to have people run for office. As Mr. DiGiorgio said, it's incredibly important to continue the debate. So um, uh, I, I think that uh, it's always great to have people running. Um, congratulations to, to the TESC uh, committee again for adding a new ordinance to our um, uh, village law. So this is the second committee that has uh, created a new law. So that's again, um, you know, the village uh, residents in action. So it's very exciting. As far as zoning and planning goes this month, the zoning board meeting is scheduled for 7.30 p.m. on April 13th uh, with a working meeting the hour prior. There's only one uh, agenda item and that's for an area variance at 10 Hollywood East for an addition on a house. The meeting will be held in person. Uh, the planning board meeting for this month has been canceled as all items have been adjourned. And I uh, wanted to say again, thanks to all the volunteers um, who serve on these boards. There's a lot of work, a lot of homework that has to um, happen to have those boards staffed and um, they're doing an excellent job. For East Chester Schools, the Board of uh, Education will hold meetings this month on April 5th. That'll be a work session and the regular meeting will be held on April 19th and that will be the school district budget adoption meeting. So a really important one, that's a big, big budget. The 2022-2023 uh, budget vote and trustee election will take place in uh, May 17th. And you can register at the district between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. at the district office at 580 White Plains Road in Eastchester. The final registration date, uh, which will be May 12th, the office will be open till 6 p.m. Absentee ballot applications are available also at the district office and the absentee ballots must be received by the clerk on 5 p.m. May 17th. East Chester PTA Council is holding a remote Zoom session entitled Create with Kindness on April 24th at 7.30 p.m. And in this program, families will learn how to use online platforms to spread kindness. What a novel idea. Um, and it's set up so the guidance department is, is facilitating this uh, with actual students from the East Chester School District who are gonna describe how you can spread kindness using social platforms. Uh, it'll also cover safety features with TikTok, um, so I think it'll be a really interesting meeting. The link to register is on the uh, East Chester PTA Council Facebook page or can be found on my Facebook page as well. The middle school is holding an eighth grade parents night out April 26th um, from 7 to 9 p.m. at Serafina Restaurant on White Plains Road. The funds will be used uh, to support activities for the eighth grade. And I wanted to give a shout out to Jenna Handel who will be working with me uh, during her senior WISE internship. Uh, she's gonna help me set up all of the uh, promotion and marketing uh, for the Tuckahoe Challenge. Uh, so we hope to be up and running sometime in May. Uh, and just a, sh a shout out to uh, the Tuckahoe schools for the Tuckaha Tuckahoe Science Olympiad team who placed ninth overall and won 10 individual medals. And congratulations to the coaches of these teams, um, Mr. Greco, Gia Lorenzo, and Ms. Ferguson. Yeah. Go science. Go science. <laughs> uh, um, at the state level, uh, New York State Governor's Youth Council membership applications are open. And so uh, this is a great way for youth between the ages of 13 and 21 to participate in governance at the state level. So in this group, you have a direct voice for 
um, how to participate with state lawmakers. So I think it's a really exciting opportunity and hope some people will take advantage of it. This can be accessed on the New York State webpage and I also have a copy of it on my Facebook page. And then I just, uh, you know, we already talked about the Easter egg hunt, so spring is here and wanted to wish everyone a pleasant and peaceful Ramadan, Passover, Easter, Spring Equinox, Arbor Day, <laughs> Earth Day, Boston Marathon Day, or start of baseball, however you celebrate spring. Mm -hmm. Have a great time. Thank you. Thanks. Trustee Taylor. Once again, I would like to congratulate Judge Fuller and Judge O'Toole, uh, Trustee Cronin and Trustee Engelbert. I would like to thank Gene and Lee for running and thank Danny Lane for his service as Village Trustee. The East Chester Community Action Partnership. ECAP presents Kids Summer Camp. It goes from July 6th to August 7th. It's at ECAP from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And to register your child, please call ECAP at 337-7768 and don't wait too long to call because space is limited. Mm. ECAP is reaching out to the local businesses to serve as a work site for ECAP and West Cop's Summer Youth Employment Program, which provides summer employment opportunities for economically disadvantaged youth between the ages of 14 and 20. The program provides youth with work experience and mentorship for eight weeks throughout the summer. Any business that would like to support this program, please contact ECAP Director Denise Chin at 337-7768. The Tucko Community Center. Life screening on, is on Wednesday, April 20th from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Uh, verify you are in good health so you can be worry-free. To schedule an appointment, call 1-888-753-1136. Uh, ECAP Director Denise Chin and Lieutenant Larry Rota from the Tuckahoe Police Department are hosting a ECAP Tuckahoe Police Department Sports Day on April 23rd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Community Center. And then finally, Lost Borough Fitness, which is run by Randy Alexander and Chanel Moore, will host two fitness days at the community center. The first one is on Tuesday, April 26th, and the second one is Thursday, April 28th, and it's from 5 to 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Taylor, Trustee Cronin. Hello again. Um, so just to reiterate what uh, Frank mentioned before the beautification committee really does need our help uh, they sent letters out uh, last month to the in entire village about their 2022 spring project ideas and their spring planting um, they rely on our support um, our the villages uh, the villagers support so please go ahead and actually while you're watching this go on to Facebook if you're on Facebook like the beautification association the Tuckahoe beautification association friend request them follow the link on their on their Facebook page to their donation link and please make a donation little donations are great big donations are greater um, but anything that you can give we all have to do what we can to keep this t uh, the village beautiful, and the, they do an incredible job. The, p the plantings, the, the flowers, the pocket parks, and this is really through the great help uh, um, of DPW, and so thank you for, to DPW for the work that you do, but thank you to the Beautification Committee. Um, right now is a very good time to go into your phone and make an online donation. They are now accepting donations through PayPal and through Square App. So you can find all of that information in your letter and also on my Facebook page and their Facebook page and every one of our Facebook pages. So there are no excuses. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, the, um, the, from TESC, uh, we have had four residents uh, sign up to have a tree planted in or around their home. So this is, this is a very successful program if you want to have a tree planted in front of your yard. Um, you can look at the TESC website for more information and information about eligibility for that. 
Um, just about the um, Easter egg hunt, uh, we John Galuzzi is looking for more adult volunteers. So we have lots of scouts and youth volunteers, and that's great. But we also could use some more adult volunteers. So if you have the time and ability and you'd like to volunteer, we could use your help. And that is on um, April 16th. Yeah, OK. Um, I just want to say a few things. I had the pleasure of attending the Cub Scout Moving Up graduation ceremony two weeks ago. I was so impressed by all the wonderful things that our scouts do to help us here in our community, in the village. Um, we really rely on the scouts. They do everything from attend events, help organize events. They, they volunteer. They do cleanups. They, they do service and service projects and outreach. And so really thank you to the parents who help the scouts do all of those wonderful things. We see you. Um, and thank you to the scouts for, for helping your community for starting so young. Uh, from the Tuckahoe seniors, uh, as, as Nicole mentioned before, Nick Zanzano did this really wonderful Tuckahoe Now and Then presentation on March 31st, which I got to attend. Um, and they are going to have two more events like that in the coming weeks. The seniors are having their Easter breakfast for lunch, uh, lunch on April 12th at uh, 12 o'clock and um, on March 31st, I believe it was, uh, we presented Arlene Gruber a certificate to um, honor her, her being inducted into the seniors, the Westchester Seniors Hall of Fame. So congratulations to Arlene and thank you for all the work that you do in this village and, and, and in Eastchester and thank you for everything that you give back to your community. Um, the seniors are closed on Holy Thursday, and that is that from the seniors. Also, the Juneteenth committee has put in a request for volunteers as well. So if that is something that you are interested in, Juneteenth obviously is June 19th. Um, we do have a, 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 we are planning on a big event. So if you are interested in, in participating as a volunteer, please reach out to Adrian, Michelle, or myself. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Cronin, and so great to have such a, a great board. I get to cross things out because they've covered it. So just want to uh, reiterate, I just got another text from someone asking about next week's meeting. I'm going to reiterate it. There is no meeting, no public meeting, um, televised meeting next week, Monday. We have combined the reorg meeting this month with the regular meeting that would have happened next month. So today's meeting counts for next week's, what would have been next week's meeting. So if you show up here next week, the lights will be out. There will be no camera. And David will be in his office. So you can always go ask him what the agenda would be. <laughs> so if you are interested in coming and talking about the budget, you're very welcome. But we will not have a regular board meeting um, next Monday. Um, also, I want to thank uh, TPD, our police department, for um, acknowledging Autism Awareness Month. Thank you, Chief, every year they do. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, um, I have worked with people with, developmental and develop with uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities for more than 30 years, and that includes people who uh, live with autism. And so I appreciate that they acknowledge um, what people who do live with autism go through by um, putting the uh, little puzzle sticker on their cards. Thank you so much. I also want to thank everyone who submitted their names to ask to participate on the master plan committee. We had a number of people respond to that. Thank you very much. We will continue to receive um, requests for people who want to participate. And then the board will take those names and uh, choose some people that can serve on that board. Our goal is to have one person represent each district and a couple of businesses serve on that board. Um, the board can't be that large, so we will have to choose some people. But fret not, you will have an opportunity to, um, to weigh in and to give your input, because there will be some opportunities through focus groups and surveys and some other opportunities for you to be able to weigh in um, on what the future of the village, um, what you'd like for it to look like. Um, I also want to acknowledge that this month is Volunteer Month, and as you've heard today throughout this meeting, uh, much of what happens in the village and all of the good work that's, that does make the village move um, are, is because of volunteers, people who are not paid, 
to do the work that they do and they give they do it for years and years and some decades and ask for nothing in return so I want to ask for those of you who are thinking about volunteering this is a good month to consider um, a, a committee that you might want to uh, participate in or even a project that you want to work on that you think that would benefit the village contact any one of us you can contact the village administrator and say that you're interested and we are always looking for people to give back I also want to thank legislator uh, County Legislator Damon Marr for the grant that was um, given to the library for programming um, we're constantly in partnership with our legislators. We've gotten grants from our, you know, our senator Shelley Mayer and our assembly person, and we work in conjunction with the county um, just to make sure that our money, as you heard our village administrator talk about, is supplemented by these grants and the support from um, our partners in government. So it's it's great to have and build relationships with these um, legislators because those are the ones who will help us when we need it. I um, also wanted to thank, uh, AI to, um, to congratulate AI Design. Last month, a few of us on the board, uh, Trustee Taylor and our village administrator, visited AI Design, and I had no idea what AI Design did. They are on Mar Marbledale. They celebrated 30 years in business, and um, when I saw AI Design, I thought they designed signs until we got there, and you realize that they design um, they, they do anything for a car, whether it's, you know, they put refrigerators in the car, they, um, they develop, you know, personalized radio, sti radio systems. I mean, they are, it's really an incredible kind of work that they do. It's very unique. Um, and so I congratulate them for 30 years of uh, people getting stuff done to their cars that I would never imagine could be done. And I uh, wanted to let you guys know that we, so a few people asked me about the liaison appointments on our board, on our website. We will be taking a look at that. And since we do have a new board member on and there may be some interest that board members might have, we will be looking at the changes we will make. So look out for those changes. We will post them on the website uh, to inform you as to who will be the liaison for which um, departments in the village. And the last thing I want to, oh, um, David, I wanted to ask you if you would give an update on the traffic light project. I've gotten a few people ask me about this, and I said it's been delayed um, in part because of the supply chain, but. Yeah, I guess it hasn't <laughs> been delayed. We are we full well and knew that it was going to be, you know, a six-month wait for any of these mm -hmm. polls. Mm -hmm. um, so those have been on order since early December, um, and they're going to be another 12 weeks. So yeah. in about a month from now, you'll see Verity Electric, who got the contract, doing some of the underground work, getting kind of started on that, um, kind of doing the concrete work and things like that. But I don't see any polls coming into this village for, you know, another like, good three months. And unfortunately, it's just, yeah. you know, it's supply chain issues, and, you know, most communities are dealing with that. So. Yeah. It's a summer project. Yeah, okay. So, but just know that we are working on it, that we haven't forgotten about it, and uh, the village administrator is on it. And then the last thing, um, I got an invite to go to a viewing at the Jacob Burns um, Theater uh, from our county, our deputy county um, um, executive. Um, the viewing was um, the movie, a documentary, Who We Are, A Chronicle of Racism in America by Jeffrey Robinson. Um, and it was a very interesting documentary. I think um, it's probably something that um, people think is one thing, and when you go and watch it, it's something else. And so we talked about possibly bringing that to Tuckahoe um, and making, giving that as an option for residents who might want to learn some more. So we're, we're in talks about that and might be at the community center. I'll keep you posted on that. If you have an opportunity to watch it, I would recommend that you do. And that's it for me. This is a second opportunity to address the board on any items on the agenda or off the agenda. Hello, good Hi. evening, Adrian Michelle, 35 Washington Street. I wanted to take this time out to thank Danny Lang for his time served here as village trustee um, and congratulate both trustees, Kara Cronin and Nicole Engelbert on being elected to serve our amazing community and um, Judge Fuller for his continued service. 
I also want to take this time out to thank the Village Board and Madam Mayor Andino for the reappointment on the Village Planning Board for another year. I look forward to continue serving and um, alongside the Planning Board members. Uh, Kara took care of uh, what I wanted to introduce about the Juneteenth event. We are looking for volunteers. Uh, we are encouraging the youth to join the, the committee as well. So that way they can, we could get their input and feedback of things that they would like to see from our committee as well. Um, our next meeting is April 14th and I can be reached on Facebook through the Tuckahoe Juneteenth Committee, excuse me, or brand B-R-A-N-D nu dot j o l at gmail dot com if you're interested in joining our committee and where will the meeting be april 14th on zoom on zoom on zoom and you can contact us for the zoom link and um for the most part juneteenth is going to take place this year on june 18th which is a saturday and we are looking for members to help plan as well as the event staff for the day mm -hmm. uh, I also want to um, take this time out to thank the board for being nominated and awarded a proclamation for District 14, which is here in Tuckahoe, Westchester, um, during March Women's Month by the Westchester Women's Advisory Board. I look forward to continuing to serve this community alongside everyone here um, to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. My name is Nancy Heitner Day. I live at Four Consulate Drive. I just wanted to ask the board a question. Do, is, is there a policy in Tuckahoe with regard to doing business with women and minority-owned businesses? A policy? Yeah, so some, oh. some cities have policies so that women and minority-owned businesses can get contracts. So you, and mean they, like, you mean like the RFP process? The RFP process, or some of them have set-asides for women and minority-owned businesses so that they can begin to be represented. Do we have anything like we that? We do not at this time. All right. But it's, a, it's something, Is there something to consider. Is something that the village would look into? So it, it's definitely something that the board can talk about. Okay. Um, and so we we will discuss it. I mean, I can send it. you some information because I know New Rochelle has some programs. Yeah, definitely send the information. Yeah, I'll send you some information mm -hmm. because I know I don't know if we have a lot of contracts, but um, I think something should be done to encourage women-owned businesses and minority-owned businesses <coughs> because, and I know the federal government. If you have federal money. That has to be, I think, I'm not sure. So definitely send whatever you do have. Okay, thank you very much, and yes. good luck, everybody. Thank you. thank you. Anyone else want to address the board on anything? Okay, anybody on Zoom, David? Okay, so having said that, uh, this meeting is adjourned. We will see you either on April 11th, if you feel like talking budget, or May 9th, and somewhere in between at the, um, at the Easter egg hunt, hopefully. Have a good night, Tuckahoe.